from some members of the church that um, the church was on fire. And of course, um, uh, I was so shocked and, and I was sitting um, in the altar um, uh, and praying. And then one of our servants, Mark Tatos, came up to me and uh, almost was in tears. And we were shocked and said, what are we going to do? Okay, so we said, we have to come here straight away. And then we came here, but um, uh, we saw the, all the, um, the fire brigades, um, uh, people working um, in the church. And thank God there is no much damage to the church, but it said that damage was inside. But I saw actually faithful hearts around the building. All the members, they have um, good memories um, in the church. People, they got baptized or got married. They are here. And this is um, an indication of the value of our church on the hearts of uh, the courts. Thank you, Bono. Yes, we've had people come from all parts of Sydney in a very short time. Here, here tonight, um, I think that's a statement to show that this church really does matter for the Coptic community and what's occurred here is, is horrific tonight, but at least it's still standing and the damage may not be as bad as um, we were predicting. This. I was shocked after I was on the way back from the west and then my mom called me, Abuna, there is something big happening, I mean our church in St. Mary's had fire on it. That's really bad, not good news at all. It's really shocking for every Christian. This is our oldest church. We are really proud of it and to keep it as it was because we, we received it from our like forefathers. So, but thanks God, I mean, it really is not a very big damage. Yeah, so uh, everyone's relieved um, yes, tonight. Yes, thanks God, thanks God, really. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Saint Mary and Saint Nina really protected it because it's their church. Australian Coptic Heritage has been negotiating with the state government, um, Minister Upton, the Minister for uh, Local Government and Heritage, uh, as well as uh, the Premier of New South Wales. Both the Minister and the Premier are concerned about this, um, this church and the preservation of the church. Um, the, the Minister Upton's office um, is currently negotiating with in a West Council in regards to preserving the church. Uh, it was only two weeks ago that I was called to the Minister's office and I had a meeting with the Chief Executive Officer. Uh, it's only a week ago that we were contacted by the Minister of Local Government's office again in regards to putting in some issues for funding. Um, the matter is still under negotiation, uh, but we are expecting something to come uh, to be forthcoming in the next two or three weeks. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. We do have support from various bishops around um, um, Australia as well as internationally. Bishop Angelos, Bishop Cyril of Melbourne and Bishop Daniel of the Monastery in Qatar. Um, as well as uh, a number of associations such as ACM, uh, Exodus Youth Works and other organisations who are supporting that the church be preserved. So it can be used hopefully once it's reacquired um, uh, as a museum and also for community services. In addition to that, we've had our own construction company and project management company come in and do their own assessment. To actually renovate the building, it'll cost $2.125 million to make it ready for use. We've offered $2.125 million to Inner West Council, who obviously are not taking us very seriously. Um, so we are still negotiating. The church still may be demolished unless the community continues to support uh, Australian Coptic Heritage and Community Services and pulls together uh, to preserve the church. And that's not just the Coptic community in Australia, but internationally, as well as uh, other Christian communities around Australia, because this is the first Coptic church to be purchased outside of Egypt and the Nile Valley in the world. So we have something very unique here in Sydney, in, in New South Wales and in Australia. Uh, we get a triple O call to um, uh, Old Deserted Church Alight, which is here on Railway Parade. Um, on arrival, the south west, south um, southeast corner was well alight. We got to work with um, multiple lengths of hose and contain the fire to that corner. We were a little worried it might spread to the rest of the church. This is why we had so many resources here, but we did manage to contain it to that corner. So you're fairly lucky the damage has been contained to that area. Okay, so the damage. Um, is minimal. It is minimal. Okay, yes. and you were able to to turn out this fire without going in, 
How do we, you access the building? We, we access the building through the front. We remove um, one of those boards from the front door. Just we were unsure whether people were living in there or not. So once we found out nobody was in there, otherwise then we resorted back to um, what we call defensive firefighting where we're not inside the building. Because buildings of, of this type, because they're old, a lot of inside wood structure, they can collapse under fire load. So. Fantastic. Well, as we were seeing the pictures um, in the media coming through, they look pretty horrific, uh, especially on Twitter. So we're very grateful um, for your efforts um, here tonight in helping us and helping put out this fire for this building is of um, significant value to the Coptic community here in Sydney and actually around the world. So so thank you very much for your for your efforts tonight and for everyone at the um, Marigal Fire Station. We're glad we can help. Um, I was actually in a Bible study and um, we, as soon as we finished, um, some guy came in and said, hey, do you know that Sydney's church is on fire? So um, to my shock, I, I just had to come past. I was intending to go home and I couldn't. This is my childhood. I was actually baptised in this church. Um, we have so many memories of all the services and Sunday school and, you know, people from the past. It's just... It's something in our heart, this is our heart, and if anything happens to it or gets taken away from us, that, that'll just break my heart. This church means so much to me. I've got so much history in this church. Um, I'm, I'm still rattling, I'm still shaken. Uh, like, as soon as I heard, I got into the car with my friend and we came here straight away. And, like, as you can see, I'm still, still very shaken up as to what has happened here tonight. You can still smell the smoke in the air. Um, we were very worried. We did relapse around the church looking to see if the church, in fact, had been damaged. But thank God, like you've heard from previous witnesses, it's only inner damage and it's not that bad. So hopefully, if it is God's will that we do acquire this church and the memory lives on, hopefully it will continue to live on in our hearts, even if it doesn't. As soon as I heard about uh, the church being hit up and the, and the images, it, it really hit home that, uh, that we're close to losing this thing. Um, but uh, thankfully enough, uh, the fire rescue was here and, 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 and you know, got, got rid of the, the and, and mitigated any damage we wanted to preserve for as long as possible. It is the birthplace of the Coptic Orthodox Church here, and any damage to it will damage our hearts, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of us have grown up here, and, and our, our families have grown up, and we'd like to see our kids uh, see this. So, you know, any damage to it's going to have an effect on us, a very deep and close effect on us. So we, we have, it's great that it's still standing. Thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God unlimitedly for saving this church and this house tonight. And as Mark was saying, it, we all ran when we heard the news to come to our birthplace. It is our birthplace. It is our heritage. And we will do our utmost best to try and help as a community to save our first church in the land of migration. And how did you find out about tonight? I uh, received a phone call for, from uh, my brother, who Bishop Angelos from London, sent him a message asking him, is this true? He got a uh, news feed from the Daily Telegraph on his phone and he called Sydney to find out if it's true. And uh, in return, I jumped in the car as I lived close by and I came to see what was happening. So it shows the solidarity of our community, again, to our beloved St. Mary's Church in Sydney. I'm, I'm just relieved that, this, that the building has been saved. Um, we're, we're very thankful to the authorities that have stepped in and, and fixed up whatever it was that well, at least you know, rescued the building from further damage. Uh, what, we've, what we've heard so far is that the, the altar itself is still, is still standing, but the floor around it has caved in and has caved down. So that's. Thank God that the altar is still preserved. Whatever else we can still we can still repair, if God willing, we do we do get um, uh, ownership or at least control back of the building, and we can use it for coffee services.